All right, all right. Well, welcome, welcome to Down Payment Assistance Workshop. Uh, we're gonna talk about a few different programs that are available uh, for educators, first responders, um, medical staff, school staff. There's a lot of folks who qualify and then even people who aren't in those categories have a lot of options as well that Sienna's gonna talk about. Um, but I'm an educator. I was an educator for 11 years. I taught schools. My first job was um, taught in schools. My first job was as a uh, after school garden teacher. And um, I just fell in love and kind of moved through education um, for over a decade, really just got to, I, it was amazing. And so now that I'm doing real estate, I still feel super connected. I still really see myself as an educator and helping people navigate what I think a lot of us in the sort of nonprofit education world are like, wait, what is this, what is this real estate thing? How do we, how do we hack this? Um, so I'm feeling super passionate about this. This is like the workshop that I've been super excited to lead. I met Fiona um, through a friend of a friend and we just hit it off immediately. And she's also been super passionate about these programs and really making home ownership accessible to more people. And so uh, I've just really enjoyed her ethic and um, kind of like, I don't know how you say it, where you, you can like work the system and make things happen for people. So uh, we've been talking about doing this workshop for a while. So I'm very happy to have all of you here. I'm very excited to introduce Fiona um, who can talk a little bit more about herself and uh, kind of launch right into what do we, you know, we're, so just so everybody knows, we are recording this. We are going to be sharing the replay with you and with anyone who missed it. Um, so just so you know, we're recording. We're going to talk for a little bit, then we're going to have Q&A. Um, so, you know, anything you want to say in a sort of public forum, great. If anything more private you want to talk about, Obviously, Fiona and I are available to speak um, privately as well. So without further ado, Fiona, talk to us. Take it away. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so meeting Sammy was amazing. We definitely hit it off right away and have a lot of similar um, passions. And so I myself have actually, in uh, my past life, I actually grew up as a musician. Um, I was a music educator for years and then moved into um, nonprofit arts education, have always been involved in the nonprofit world and um, just really sort of growing up and, and sort of spreading a, um, an ethic of paying it forward, paying it back and just really wanting to see our communities um, be, the people who work in our community should be living in our communities. And so that's where my passion for home ownership comes from. Um, you know, several years ago, I had a life situation where I had to change careers so that I went from being nonprofit to profit so that I could actually support my family. And I never imagined in a million years that I could take um, my passion for teaching and use it in the um, home loan world. And so I, I spend most of my day working with clients. I work with a lot of financial advisors and CPAs and um, realtors to help people strategize home loans and create wealth through home ownership. And so that means everybody, it doesn't matter um, what your income level is, there are loan programs out there for you. And my passion is spreading the word about them. So um, I am a direct lender. I have access to you know, 240 different types of loans, but specifically the loans that I use um, with educators and first responders, I layer a variety of different programs and um, many of them come to the table with little um, and sometimes in, in some cases, no money down. Um, so that's what we wanna talk to you guys about tonight. Um, so well, without further ado, to rent or to own? That is the question. Here in Southern California, renting is really a pretty common thing. Most people feel like property 
property prices are crazy. I'll never be able to afford to live near where I work, that kind of thing. And so what are the benefits? You know, when we do rent versus uh, own analysis, we take a look at, you know, when you're renting, you're paying somebody else's mortgage. So what if we could show you how to spend the same amount of money, if not a little bit more, because you're making an investment on a home as you are on your rent. And so that's what we try to do is show you how to do that. We do that with how, how can I afford the down payment? So huge myth, I need 20% down to buy a house. Is that true? Absolutely not. 20% down myth came about because lenders would lend money. And if you defaulted on the loan, they figured that if you had 20% down, they could recover 80%. And that's why that 20% myth came into play because over, you know, under 20% down, you, we have what's called private mortgage insurance. Um, and if we do FHA loans, you see mortgage insurance and it gets a really bad rap. But what I love to do is show people how it actually mortgage insurance can really benefit you. And we live in an economy where our homes are appreciating at a rate that people are refinancing out of mortgage insurance all the time. If you have a good lender and you build a lifelong relationship with your lender, that lender is going to be following that loan with you. And chances are, I'm going to be calling you before you even realize that you're ready to refinance out of the mortgage insurance. So do you need 20% down? Absolutely not. We see first time home buyer programs with three to 5% down. And the programs that we're talking about tonight are grant assistant programs and bond programs where we actually are able to help you get the down payment assistance through a second loan. And then on top of that, there are programs that also layer on down payment assistance and so, or sorry, closing cost assistance. And so, like I said, many of our clients are coming to the table with very little money out of their own pocket. So what are those pro, whoops, what are those programs? The California, um, the, it's called Cal HFA, the Housing and uh, Finance Association. They run programs. There are, um, I also work for a program um, and I'm a, a certified lender through Homes for Heroes. And I donate a portion of my origination fee back to our heroes. And that is teachers, um, school administrators. This also includes firefighters, uh, policemen, so on and so forth. Um, the, the reason that I really like to um, work with the educators and firefighters in particular is that there are specific programs that allow and allow us to loan you 100% of that 3% or 3.5% down payment. So again, coming to the table with zero dollars or very little. So I know that's very brief, but I wanna make sure we have lots of time for questions and answers because every person's situation is very individual. And um, I am also going to share a Calendly link at the end of our um, little session here so that you can sign up for some time to chat with me about your own personal situation. Um, you know, some people are worried about student loans, what kind of debt they have, what can I afford? And um, so my whole goal is to show you what you can afford um, in terms of a monthly payment and how we can help you get into a loan with um, some of these bond programs and down payment assistance programs. I'm gonna turn it over to Sammy, who once you get pre-qualified, you can go shop. Thank you. Yeah, and I think um, one thing I realized is just like even what is the process, right? So a lot of people come to me and say, hey, I wanna buy a house. like. What do I do, right? And so a lot of the times I'm actually like sending them away and saying, okay, go talk to Fiona um, and let's like get all of the, the like, what are you gonna qualify for? Um, what's your monthly payment gonna be? Like get all of your personal situation um, worked out. And then you're gonna get either a pre-qualification or a pre-approval letter. And typically like back in the day, right? You've heard of open houses, like let's just go like walk and look at open houses. Well, we can't do that anymore um, because we're in a global pandemic. And so now everything is appointment based and you basically can't get an appointment to go see a house unless you have a pre-approval letter 
and uh, proof of funds or depending on how much you're putting down, you know, showing that whatever you're saying you're putting down on the letter, you actually have that. So it's kind of limited to just people who are serious about buying. Um, but I always tell people like talk to a lender first. Like one of the biggest regrets I had was I just always thought I wouldn't qualify for a loan. And I just didn't think it was, I thought it was about my income. I didn't really understand that it's actually your debt to your income ratio. And Fiona and any lender is going to really get dive into that with you. Like you don't have to pay down all of your student loan debt before you qualify for a house. Like you don't, like there's a lot of factors um, that I just didn't understand. And I think working with a lender early on will help you get all of that paperwork in order. Cause maybe you are six months away from actually being able to get a house, but um, then you're kind of like on a financial fitness plan. Um, and then with that, we can start looking. So basically once you have a pre-approval letter, then we set you up, you know, I'd find out a little bit, okay, what are you looking for? Like, what's the dream, right? What, how many bedrooms, where, location, location, right? Um, and then we can start actually searching for houses that are on the market. Real talk right now in the market, we're, you know, it's March, 2021. Uh, there's very, there's fewer houses on the market. So inventory is pretty low, which means that there's a lot more competition, especially at the, at the entry level house prices. Um, so it's not going to be easy, but that's why I think it's good to kind of get started and just like accept that it's going to be a process and it's going to take some commitment. Um, and then, you know, once we look for houses and we find the one you like, then we, Fiona jumps in, gets the letter in for you. We write the offer um, and we might get outbid and that's okay. It wasn't the house for us. And, you know, when it, I believe that when it's right, it's right. And so even if it takes a few tries. And so that's kind of where we're at in the process now. And then, you know, we would all work together to get all the paperwork and then um, close on, on the house. Yeah, and one thing I'll add is I think the, and you'll probably agree with me, the one thing I'm noticing right now is the team aspect of the lender mm -hmm. and the realtor right now in the market. I don't think I've ever seen it more important um, because the inventory is so tight and sellers are being so picky about, you know, how they're deciding to, to um, accept, what offers they're deciding to accept. I, I notice like nine out of 10 times if I'm if I have a good partnership with the realtor and I know them and we work together and I can call the selling agent and we've got a plan um, you know we're 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 not getting every <laughs> offer accepted but we're learning how to get that offer accepted and how to market you as a buyer um, and I think that's really key right now is that we are finding more and more that we have to actually market our buyers so that, so that you are a marketable borrower. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's great. Okay, so I, I, I would love, since we're calling this a q and A, I'd love to open it up because I think that's really where the, the gold is for, for anybody who's interested. There's so many particulars um, and, and we're really here to, to answer questions and be a resource. If there are very specific questions that you want us to answer, um, or if you have really intricate um, situation, what I would love to do is have you schedule time with me. Um, I just blocked out for the next two weeks. I opened up a bunch of my calendar specifically for people who have come to this webinar so that we can um, get your questions answered and get you pre-approved and pre-qualified. I mean, I think even if you, like Sammy said, if you are six to 12 months out, at least you're sort of on the path and you can get to know the market and get a feel for it. Um, if you're waiting six or 12 months to get started, then you might be six or 12 months from, from, from being able to do it. So we can help you with credit. We can help you with your, your debt ratios, all of that. It's, I, I love it. It's a puzzle. There's so many ways that we can structure a loan. There's so many ways that we can help present you. So mm -hmm. um, I'm ready to open it up if you are. You think so, Sammy? Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. And I'll let people, we can, uh, folks can unmute themselves um, and ask questions. I will kind of throw out the first question that um, people are asking in the chat. And could you give Fiona an example of like, I think the deal you just did where people came with no money down, um, yeah. like structure, you know, like here, right. you know, yeah. someone's coming to you, like structure that for us and actually yes. walk us through that. Okay. So I love to layer programs. Um, and, but the one program in particular that really worked very well for teachers. And like I said, firefighters, um, they, the program with Cal HFA actually allows us to borrow the full 3% or 3.5% if we end up doing an FHA loan. There, there are conventional loans, VA loans. I mean, so it's not just one type of loan that is available for you. Um, we, we actually have the ability to get you really great Fannie Mae conventional loan. Um, what we end up doing is we layer loans. And so we, we are essentially doing a deferred loan, which means you're not paying anything on it for the life of the loan, we're borrowing the 3% down. So in this case, um, I believe the borrower was purchased in Rancho Cucamonga, I can't remember. And it was a $550,000 home, offer was accepted. They put down $5,000 of their own money into earnest. Um, we borrowed the full three and a half percent down and then we layered it with another program for, um, it's called ZIP, Zero Interest Program. Um, it is a closing cost program. And so that is 3% of the loan goes back and pays for the closing costs. So at the end, in when we went through escrow, we closed everything. This borrower actually ended up getting money back at the end of the deal. Now, the reason that they ended up putting money down was because, again, this is a very tight market. And so they needed to show that they had some skin in the game. Um, and so $5,000 was what we decided and what was accepted by the seller. Um, that can vary. Again, it depends on where, you know, who the seller is, what they're, but those are all things that, you know, Sammy and I would strategize and, and you know, take what you can do or what you have available um, and really tailor these offers to you. But that is one example of somebody who really brought very little to the table. And ultimately, um, probably like maybe $1,100, most of that was actually prepaying some of their homeowner's insurance that they were gonna have to pay anyway. Um, so a lot of your closing costs in, in a home uh, purchase are actually going towards prepaid taxes and prepaid insurance. So they're not costs, they're just fees and, and um, costs that you would normally have associated with a home purchase. Thank you, Fiona. And we have some questions about, um, so I think specifically you've mentioned educators and firefighters. I think nurses also qualify for the same. Um, yeah, so- Or is that a separate there, thing? Yeah, again, yeah. So there are, like I said, there are a variety of different bond programs, but first responders in general, um, there is another program that allows, um, I believe it's a, I think they just put it up to $11,000 towards down payment. Um, and then um, the interest rate scales um, to how much, to what percentage um, of the loan that we, we actually stack through. But for first responders, those loans are actually grants and they're forgivable. Yeah, I think people, then also there's some questions about, um, you talked about the deferred loan. Yeah. Um, is that something, you, like, when do you start to pay that back? What's the interest rate? Like, how does that work? Yeah, it... so so that that loan actually just kind of sits there. And it sits there for 30 years if you stay in the home for 30 years. But if you sell or refinance the home, you, you essentially pay that loan back. Um, but typically what we're seeing is when you're purchasing a home, you're going to stay there for at least five years most of the time. Um, and that's another thing is I have a, a long discussion about, you know, how long are you going to stay in the home before we decide what kind of loan product to put you in. But um, for the most part, we are seeing homes appreciate at a rate much faster than 
on um, the percentage of, of that we're borrowing. And remember, this is like 3% that we're borrowing or 3.5% that we are borrowing. So essentially, it's like cash that's being held. Um, but when you sell the home and your home appreciates, typically it, it's a wash. And you mentioned that some of the, the grants or the loans are forgivable. Like, how do you qualify for them being basically where you don't have to pay it back? Yeah, so when we have when we do the application and we submit through the programs, um, essentially they we look at your um, pay stubs. So if your pay stub is like if you're an LA County teacher or you're a firefighter or policeman or um, you work for a hospital, um, oftentimes we that's how we um, qualify you. Just seeing where you work. We do a um, employment verification as well. Yeah, that's, confirm. And that'll be pretty much for any loan. You'll have unemployment verification. Yeah, we verify employment for any loan. Actually, with COVID, we've been that you most lenders are verifying at various uh, intervals throughout the process. Mm -hmm. They don't want to find out two days before closing that yes. you're not working there anymore. <laughs> so some videos. Um, uh, Homes here in, LA, home here in LA, yeah, go for it. Homes here in LA tend to be in the 650 plus range, so PMA makes a high mortgage even higher for educators um, and possibly unaffordable. Are there ways to lower the PMI? That's if you're putting less than 20% down. Um, yeah, so the the private mortgage insurance is actually a very small percentage, um, depending on the loan itself. It's it it. It really amounts to maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars a month, and again, this is also something that you can refinance out of. Um, so it does increase the price. The month it doesn't increase the the price of the house, but it does increase the monthly payment. But um, it shouldn't really, it shouldn't really make the amount that you qualify for significantly less. Got it. But it it affects. So it's affecting your monthly payment, but it's not going to change the house price that you qualify for yeah. very much. Correct. Okay. And then clarifying question, if you're a nurse, but not a first yeah. responder. Yeah, sure. No, that's so good. anybody in anybody in, that's a healthcare worker or works healthcare administration, the health field. Yeah. So a lot of these programs are really designed again to to enrich our communities, to um, you know, really help us achieve a diverse economic um, range in in our neighborhoods throughout LA and um, I know Orange County and Riverside. Um, so, so the programs really aren't trying to find a reason not to qualify you. <laughs> um, we're really trying to spread the word about these programs and really have more and more people use them. We had a question. I'm not sure I totally understand it. So maybe we can clarify. What if you need 20% down? Is 3% too low? So oh. wouldn't that affect the interest rate? Okay. So if you have 20% down, that's a whole different ball game and in an entirely different um, loan program. Although I have had a client recently where we did use this program to get to 20%. So 3% is the minimum. Okay, 3% is the minimum. People who do have money saved up, this, these programs can actually help them increase the purchase price because the loan is, stays. As long as you, you know, your loan amount is never gonna change, but the more money and cash that you have available, the higher your purchase price can be. So if you're coming with nothing, I might say, okay, we can get a, a $500,000 house. Um, but if you're coming with some savings and you've been saving for a number of years and you're like, God, I am never going to get to that 20% or, you know, I'm, I'm so close to, um, you know, having a loan amount that I feel is affordable and you have the cash available, these, these programs can help, you know, I mean, if an extra 20 or $30,000 is really the thing that's going to push you over the edge into being able to get into that home, um, then you know that that's absolutely i guess i really left that out yes if you are coming to the table with some savings and you do have cash available it changes everything 
um, in terms of your purchase price. Yeah, the more cash you put down, the higher the purchase price can be. In fact, when you're qualifying for a home loan, I love how people are like, how much of a house can I buy? What's the purchase price? Really what you're qualifying for is the loan amount. You're not really qualifying for a purchase price because that purchase price can change depending on how much cash you have available. If it takes you six months to find a house and you've saved up you know, 10 grand in that six months, then you, know, you, can, you can get a, a $10,000 more expensive house. Great. And so the, you, you talked about pay stubs, employment verification, and what other documents, like what, what documents yeah. do you need to pre-qualify someone just generally? Good question. Also? Okay. So super simple. If you are a W-2 employee, we typically request two years of W-2s. Um, we'll take uh, 60 days of pay stubs, your most recent pay stubs, two most recent bank statements, um, if like your savings um, for down payment um, or, you know, your savings are in a different account, you just, and it's say it's like stocks, sometimes those only come quarterly. So you give us a quarterly statement. But as long as we can track 60 days of, of the financing, or sorry, the, the cash or your banking, then um, that's great. And then photo ID. I think that's it. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And then the big question that a lot of us, no, but if you, what if you have a lot of 1099s on your income and very okay. few W-2? Right, so to clarify, if you have a 1099, I'm gonna ask you for two years worth of um, your personal taxes. If you own your own business and it's in a corporate structure, I'll also ask for the corporate taxes and there's a whole different calculation for that. But um, I, am, I am very well-versed in the self-employed, um, uh, loan. A lot of lenders don't like to do it, but uh, like I said at the very beginning, I was actually a musician. So if you're an actor or a musician or a contract worker, um, I've worked in that field before. And so I've gone to battle with many an underwriter. Um, so yeah, so we do the 1099s, two years of taxes, and then the rest is all the same. If you own your um, at this time of year, we'll ask you for a, a P&L statement. Um, for year to date. But if you're a contractor and you're getting paid, we just get the pay stubs. And realistically, what percentage of my income should I be allocating for a mortgage? Should I be trying to keep it under a certain percentage? Yeah, good question. Okay, so when we, we talk about that income ratio, um, typically <laughs> you really, mm, okay, so the published, debt to income limits are, are a little bit more conservative than what lenders are actually going to allow you. And mostly that's going to depend on your credit, what your history is with paying your bills and that kind of stuff. But for the loans that we're talking about, your total debt to income ratio is going to be capped at 45%. So that's gonna include your car payment, any credit cards. If you have credit cards, um, where the minimum monthly payment is say $30, it's not the, the 2000 that you owe, it's the $30 that's gonna to count towards your debt ratio. And so when we, when we meet and we talk about what your debts are, we go through all of that. A lot of times I can take a quick look at your credit report and we can do a, a little fast finagling to help you open up. Um, you know, I had somebody that I talked to two months ago and they opened up a uh, $1,300 yeah, $1, in available um, qualifying monthly um, payment. So just simply by moving a few of her um, credit payments down. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that is, um, like I, I spoke earlier about how it's important to talk to a lender kind of early on in the process because I think a lot of us are like, I have credit card debt, I have student loan debt, I have a car payment, and just sort of like assume that it's the full amount, when really you're actually looking at like a monthly, it, it's, on, it's on a monthly basis. So it's your monthly income, and then it's your monthly uh, payments. And then also interest rates um, right now, like for mortgages, is affecting how much you can afford, because with lower interest rates, right. your payment's lower, so you can afford more house. 
right? Yeah. So as interest rates are kind of moving. So there's just like so many factors that yeah. like I could not help you with that. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are like, yeah. Oh, Sam, and I help me buy think it house, can but- be intimidating to be like, oh, I'm not ready to do this yet. But it's really like, this is what I do every day. And um, I really enjoy it. And I think just a little bit of strategy can sometimes make all the difference in the world. Um, But yeah, you're, yeah, it can, it can be overwhelming, but I, I mean, I try to make it fun and um, I do, I really enjoy it. I think that, um, I think that everybody has the potential to, to get themselves into a situation where they can purchase. Yeah. And I think like anything, it's kind of like, you know, how do you hack the system? How do you get the monthly payment down so you can yeah. afford the, ha- right? Like it's, it's getting, um, it's kind of like knowing the system in order to uh, figure it out. And that's yeah. why having a good lender is a good ally. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's actually a couple of other um, questions here. One is if I am taking out student loans every six months right now, but they won't be in repay to keep me from getting a loan. No, because we actually just look at your current picture today. We're looking at your picture today. So um, the one thing, and actually, I don't know how the student loans work. It probably, when you do the FAFSA every year, um, they probably are looking at your debt load as well. So, um, but in terms of getting a home loan, no, we look at, we look at a snapshot of your, of your credit and your debt today. Um, I love this other question too. When do lenders get paid? Should I start contacting lenders to start the conversation? So yeah, so lender doesn't get paid until the loan closes. Um, And so there is, there's really no cost for you to work with somebody. And um, I will say that um, we're in a very high volume market. And so if you just sort of go online and you just sort of randomly pick somebody to talk to, um, you may not get a whole lot of time with that person. They may not build a relationship with you over time. Um, so I would definitely maybe talk to a few. Um, obviously, I'm going to I'm opening up my schedule. I would love to be one of those people that you talk to. Um, but really getting a report and scheduling um, some time so that they can understand what your situation is and your goals are. Um, if they're not asking you, you know, how long do you plan to stay in this house? What are your goals for, you know, five, 10 years from now? If they're not asking you those questions, they're really doing you a disservice because there's a lot of ways to structure a loan to help you get to where it is that you want to go. Um, so yeah, but we do not get paid until the loan closes. So uh, there's, um, we, we just do what we do. <laughs> and, uh, and I personally, like I work hundred percent word of mouth. I don't do any, I don't buy leads. I don't, do a whole lot of stuff. I love consumer education. These webinars are really, um, I'm a huge fan of those. And let's see, somebody else just said, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah a question that hurting, heard that condo and townhome sellers are looking for a higher down payment percentage to be competitive compared to single family homes. Um, I'm actually curious, have you found that to be true in the- I haven't, have you? I not no not necessarily i think um i think generally sellers are looking for people with higher down payments and that's just kind of like it's a little bit silly in my personal opinion because as long as the money shows up at the table it really doesn't matter and i think that's where you know you know when we talk about these you know people always say to me like how are you getting um offers accepted with these bond programs and how are you getting and it's literally because i take the time to call the selling agent and let them know and i educate them about the program that i'm using i tell them about myself all of my underwriting is in house local processing like they really just want to know that the loan is going to close Um, So many times, you know, uh, people are getting pre-qualified and, and they're not, it's not thorough and then it falls through. So really more than how much you're putting down, it's, you know, how competent are the people who are working for you? I think that's really more important um, than how much you put down. And, and in terms of, I, I, you know, I, this, 
this question is really sort of probably a lot because it is such a competitive market out there. But like I said, I think if you have a team that is going to present you as a buyer, um, we're selling you. And so that's really where that team, you know, is important, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think there's so much that goes on. Because, you know, you could definitely like buy a house without a realtor. Yeah. You know, you could buy, a, I mean, I guess probably not without a lender, but, you know, you could just go to like a big bank and, you know, just fill out an application and hope you get assigned somebody there. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I always tell people look, you should really talk to a few lenders. Mm -hmm. You should really like them because you're going to be yeah. working with them and they're going to need to kind of answer like they can't stop at not at 5 p.m because we might right. need to get and we might need to get an offer in like on sunday and we need some responsiveness yeah. <laughs> happening so um you know the team is going to sell you and yeah i mean i think specifically to that question I think there, there really just is a misconception, I think, of a seller saying, I've got 15 yeah. offers on the table. Oh, this person's bringing 20% down, so they must have more money and right. be more able to close the loan. Um, but, you know, I mean, I've dealt with like all cash offers yeah. and, and the seller's like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to take the all cash offer. And then that person drops out halfway yeah. through and then you've taken your home off the market, right? So- I think what Fiona said is important yeah. is like selling, we're selling you as a strong buyer and, and Fiona has done her whole financial colonoscopy with you. <laughs> so she knows everything that's happening <laughs> and she, you know, like it's not going to be just like, oh yeah, I just filled out some application online and I got pre-qualified and then is it not someone who's like helping you figure that out. Oh gosh, there's so many great questions in here. Oh, yeah. So awesome. So what's the general fee for a lender? And is the buyer paying the lender the fee directly or do they make a commission from the sale? And if the seller pays the lender directly, what's the max that a seller should be paying? Um, and so, yeah, I actually did. You mentioned, Fiona, that you were a, a direct lender. Um, yeah, I'm a so direct lender. I would love yeah. for you to kind of clarify that for people. Yeah, so, so brokers basically shop around to different companies. And um, so they, you, they don't necessarily know who their underwriter is going to be, their processor is going to be, but they can, they can oftentimes get a super duper low rate, but they don't, they don't have like an in-house team. Um, so I've always been a retail lender, a direct lender working for a mortgage bank. All we do is mortgages. We don't do personal banking or anything like that. So um, this really is our bread and butter. And we do specialize specifically in purchase loans. Um, although I will say we've definitely um, benefited from the refi boom. Um, we've always been very focused on purchase and, and home ownership. So um, it's, you know, I, so we are the bank. Um, if that answers the question. So we are the bank. We are, you know, when, when it's time to fund the loan, it's coming from our warehouse. Um, we do service um, a number of our loans, which means we'll keep them on our books. But um, every bank and every lender and every, you know, um, investor will often go to the secondary market to sell those loans. And that's how they free capital and that's how money just works. So, um, but yeah, so that's what it means to be a direct lender is that I, I work directly for the bank. Um, my processor, my underwriter, my entire team is literally local and I talk to them every day. So I am with them through the entire process from the minute we start. Um, let's see. But I'll just say the transition between the, the Fiona, who is like the lender that you're actually talking to, and then the underwriters who are kind of in the back, who you don't talk to, who are looking at all of your paperwork, is very important because if Fiona is not doing her job well, uh, she's just grabbing some information, not verifying it, not checking it. She, she's putting together like a whole packet that all these people behind her are double checking. And so if you're just, you know, walk into any old bank and just kind of sit at a desk, that person may not necessarily be um, 
getting all of the information like packeted yeah. nicely with her, with the team, right? So yeah. there's a lot of stuff that sort of happens. It, it also the means that um, the other thing about a direct lender is it it means that I I have access. Like I said, I think I said 240 some of loans. Obviously, um, you know different areas of the country will will tend to lean towards different um, loan programs. But um, I know, I do know all of the bond programs and the Cal Heifer programs very, very well. I also live in the South Bay. So I do a lot of high balance and um, jumbo loans as well. So, but it, but it's, it's the, it's the knowing you and your paperwork and the calculations well enough to know what program to put you into. Because a lot of times if you pick up the phone, they'll just basically say, oh, this is what you qualify for, go for it. You know, um, they don't really give you a lot of options or um, sort of, I, I like to lay out scenarios where you can actually um, choose if you do have savings and we talk about like, oh, well, maybe we're going to purchase a home that's going to need some work. Maybe we don't want to put 100% of your savings into this. Maybe we want to hold some money back. Um, those are all conversations that, um, you know, someone like myself, um, that I, I would say the way that I differentiate myself is definitely that sort of personal interaction and customer service. But we got two really awesome, really great questions. So, well, one is I'm curious, of what are the pros and cons of a home versus a condo or townhome? Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's, that's a great like conversation. Like financially would, or personally, yeah, like what are your that, thoughts from a real estate standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I would throw that back to um, <laughs> you in terms of the, a buyer of like, well, you know, cause I'm actually working with a lot of people who say like, I don't want a town home at all. Like that's not, a, you know, and then they're actually finding like cool town homes that are way more in their budget with that have like tons of common area, have a preschool. And so I think that's kind of like reshaping. I mean, I'm an LA kid and so you know, I think we think of LA as like, you know, a bunch of single family houses with the yard yeah. and everything. So, I mean, that I think is a preference question, uh, just generally, like, where do you want to live, location, um, what's important to you? Because I think, you know, if we have all the money in the world, you could buy anything you wanted, anywhere you wanted, right? But at some yeah. point, you're going to have to choose, are you, do you want a location? Do you want a size, square footage? The lot size like what what do you want and so I think that's a question and so I'm curious what your thoughts are yeah so I will say that like I, I totally agree with that although I think the misconception for a lot of people that I talk to is that oh a condo is cheaper um because it's not a home well not always and actually when when we qualify you and pre-qualify you um, or pre-approve you, again, like I said, we're, we're pre-approving you for an actual um, housing payment. And that's the total monthly payment. So that is your principal and interest, which is the loan with us, the taxes that you owe the county, um, the homeowner's insurance that protects your asset. And then also if you're, if you're having mortgage insurance, but the HOA fee, and some of these HOA fees are three or $400 a month. And that can actually translate into like $50,000 in a home, um, you know, sometimes. So when, when we, when I run scenarios side by side for people, I always say, okay, the area that we're looking at, the average HOA fee is 300 so this is this is around about the amount that you can purchase for a home and a condo. Guess what? The house is always a higher purchase price. So it's not necessarily cheaper. Um, but but then again, the housing prices, so it just it really depends, but it is not necessarily cheaper to do a condo. It just really kind of depends on where you are. So some people don't want to. I'm fixing my roof right now and like the sewer is like some people just don't want to deal with that stuff too so I think that's a, that's like a personal preference yeah. as well um I love this question because it's something I'm passionate about which is um like we've been talking about individual buyers so um does anything change if you're coupled or married and then also what if um and I'm assuming like people who are not related to each other buying something collectively. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, there's there's no discrimination um, for how many people can purchase a home. Um, some of the bond programs may have a few limitations, um, but nothing like crazy. Like for the most part, like if you and a friend wanted to get together, or you and a, a partner, or you know, in, you know, non-married, if you have some sort of agreement, um, you know, there's there isn't a limit. Sometimes we'll have parents who want to co-sign. Sometimes, um, you know, with these bond programs though, they are for first-time home buyers, um, the first-time home buyers who are going to be um, residing in the home. So it has to be a primary residence for you. So you can't buy a house with these down payment assistance programs if you're not going to be living in the house. So it's not an investment property. There are, however, lots of really great programs um, that do allow us to, um, to do programs where you can um, rent it out or somebody can co-sign and not live in it. So, let's see. And I guess on that, the, a related question about a married couple who are both educators or both qualifying, does that help with your buying power or how does, does it change anything? Um, it's, it's a one, it's kind of like a one loan one sort of deal. So no, it doesn't not necessarily um, doesn't necessarily equal out to more down payment because it's a pretty standard set formula um, for the for the specific loan, regardless of how many buyers there are involved um, or who's right. involved with that. So um, I do like on for my part, um, uh, you know, as a lender, like I said, I um, I work with. Um, the Homes for Heroes program. And so I kick, I um, basically lender credit a portion of our origination fee. And, um, and then my company actually matches that. So that actually comes out pretty good. And then there was a few questions about like service areas, like what parts, a lot of folks are in California. Um, so yeah. what, what service areas, and then also um, do you work with people who might want to, who are looking for a home outside of California? I can speak to that too as well. So from the lender yeah. perspective. So, so I know Sammy, you do a lot out of state. Personally, I, as a specifically, I only originate loans in the state of California. It's the only Cal um, state that I am licensed in currently. My company is licensed in 49 states and I do have relationships with people that I can refer you to. Um, the, the down payment assistance programs that we're specifically talking about tonight, those are all California state programs. I do know that there are other states that have those programs though. And then somebody says, do they have to be first time home buyers? At least one um, borrower needs to be a first time home buyer. And that, that is basically anybody who has not owned a home for at least three years. Uh, and there are exceptions to that rule. So, but there are also other programs <laughs> that that we can use in other community assistance programs and and such so I guess the 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 point of the whole night is that everybody there's a loan for everybody <laughs> there's a program for everybody yeah yeah there's questions and this has come up with a couple of my clients if uh, they've co-signed on a family member's home um, which was recently paid off and was listed on the deed as a tenant in common so does that person qualify as a first-time home buyer did they live in the house? That, so that's kind of one of those things yeah. where give me a call and we'll chat about it. Um, they did live in the house. Um, I think they would be considered, I, I don't think they would be considered a first time home buyer, although um, there might be something we could do. <laughs> Again, it's all on how you structure things, so yeah. And if it's been more than three years, then that's yes. what separate yeah. issue as well. And then there was a, a question about the HUD housing program for teachers. I've seen some information about discounted properties for teachers and revitalization areas. Yeah, so HUD, so, so HUD is an FHA program. And so that's, um, that's a government backed program that um, it, they basically the guidelines become a little less rigid. Um, so you can put less down. There's um, uh, a, a lot of times uh, like duplexes or triplexes, quads, you know, the, 
ability to buy those particular um, homes is a little bit easier. Um, so that's a very that's a very specific other program that we can we can look into if somebody's interested. They tend to be I don't not necessarily distressed um, properties, but typically a HUD a HUD home has is is a defaulted FHA loan. So the properties don't tend to be they they, they need a little love, I would say. Yeah, in my experience anyway. I wanted to touch back on the question about outside of California too. So like, for example, both of us are licensed in California. Um, and so there's a couple, it kind of depends where you mean by out of state. So I have like, as a real estate agent, I can help people buy in like Arizona or Nevada, like there's cooperation among um, real estate agents. And then if, um, so like I refer a lot of people, because a lot of people are moving out of state. Um, so I, I basically make it, I'm, I'm very involved in like out of state um, real estate investments myself. And so I kind of make it my business to know good realtors in other markets. So basically tell me where you're, where you're thinking and I'll find you somebody and then basically connect you with someone um, yeah. In that and I would say well. most people in our industry tend to kind of collect <laughs> people right. we know and can trust because, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I want to be a lender for life. And so I'm following alone, but I'm also following people as they move. And I want to make sure that, you know, if, if they're leaving, you know, they get to find somebody like me somewhere else. So, yeah, definitely reach out if you're looking in specific places. I also just wanted to mention kind of a little bit on, on the question of collective buying. Um, uh, I just wanted to also talk like a little bit more broadly about housing affordability um, and like house hacking. Uh, so that's kind of like a general term for sort of like rethinking the sort of, I'm going to buy a house and my you know nuclear family is going to live in it and we're all gonna just pay the mortgage. Um, you know, so kind of in order of expense, I would say like there's three great ways to house tax. So one would be to buy a house. Um, you could either buy it collectively with friends or you could just buy it yourself and then just rent out every room in the house, right? Like it depends what stage of life you're in. If you don't want roommates, you know, but I know people who have lived in the living room and rented every single room in their house and they live for free um and that you know and they own a house so that's one thing um and then another would be to try like Fiona was talking about try to if you're an owner occupant meaning you're not buying the property to uh you know, just as an investment but you're actually going to go live in it you can buy a duplex basically one to four units is all considered a residential loan. Anything over five units becomes a commercial loan and we're having a completely different conversation. But you could buy a fourplex with the same kinds of loans that Fiona is talking about and you know, live in one, rent out the other. I'm helping somebody do that right now with an FHA loan. Um, so he's putting three and a half percent down and he's gonna own an investment property. And, and, then, and that's oh, yeah. where HUD, for those types of programs, that's where those, the HUD homes are the best because, um, the, because the down payment is, the, you know, they, there are all kinds of assistance programs because they want to get those houses back into ownership. Yeah. And then I guess the third way is, I would say the most expensive way in that it, it's not necessarily numerically the most expensive, but it requires the most cash, which is that you buy a house that has a large lot. And now every single house in California is eligible for an accessory dwelling unit, which is an ADU they call it, uh, which is kind of like a granny flat, a mother-in-law unit conversion. So you could convert a garage or you could actually build a new one. Um, you could actually build a new one and convert a garage. So you could turn a single family house into three units. Uh, there are some programs like LA Moss that um, sort of help you with that. There's a huge waiting list for something like that. But to literally, you are you are doing a construction project at your house, and you're probably going to spend 
anywhere from 60 to $200,000. And you're talking about a construction loan, which is a totally different thing. So typically you would need a lot of cash to do that. So that's not necessarily, but it is creating more housing, which I think is cool. Like you're literally creating more units of housing in LA and then you're helping your house become more affordable by renting out one or two more units. So just wanted to also talk about like, once you get into a house, there's more ways that are unrelated to lending that will could make it more affordable to buy. And people have been doing this. It's not new. <laughs> people have been house hacking for a long time. But, um, and someone wanted to ask about, uh, the readdress the question if one co-signer is a first time home buyer but the other is not do they still qualify for that yeah as long as one person on the loan is a first time home buyer then it's considered um first time home buyer program for any of the programs and the bond programs as well mm -hmm. this is great i love well, this. The, the questions have trickled uh trickled down um so pretty much, um, Fiona, do you want to throw up the, the contact yeah. slide one more time if possible? But um, I'm honestly, also, oh yeah. I also want to put, I'm going to put my calendar link in here. I opened up the next two weeks, a bunch of time blocks. Um, oops, um, to, let me see if this works. Um, uh, to specifically meet, I'll give you a half an hour of my time. And then we, if we need more, we can schedule more um, for specific questions and specific. And, and if anybody wants to get pre-approved or pre-qualified or um, find out their specific situation, I did open up that time. So here I'm going to share the screen and what Yeah, do? so, I mean, both of us are super available, um, like we said this i mean i'm just like excited about this obviously this is our jobs like this is what we do yeah. for our income and our lives but like specifically this is what we want to be doing um is helping people like get into homes and uh i mean we could have a whole like meta discussion about generational wealth building and home ownership but i think if you're here you sort of like already understand <laughs> that piece um and so Oh, Fiona, oh. you are not available. Oh, Fiona's no, I'm not that. good. Okay, here's what I'm going to have you do. <laughs> um, contact me by um, email. Oh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> I just went Everybody in and opened it all up. Maybe I closed it. Okay, email me and send me um, a couple of available times and we'll. I'll be super flexible. Um, gosh, I'm sorry about that, guys. That failure. So... Yeah, we're I just happy to chat. Fiona's going to fix her Calendly. And uh, don't worry, we have your emails for you registered. So she'll fix it and send out that link as well. Um, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll fix it. Basically, the next step is, yeah, is to have a conversation. And just, you know, we're so happy. This was awesome. We were not sure how long, but we had so many great questions. I was super excited about that. Thank you all so much for um yeah, and you if know. there are other specific topics you guys yeah. would love us to like expand on, um, I know we totally geek out over sharing this information because I think there's so much that um, there's so many myths out there, misconceptions. Um, we just really want people as possible to know about the, the possibilities and the opportunity and um, just really to help people get into homes. So thank you so much, guys. This is so great. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody so much for your time on a Thursday night. Uh, Y'all have to go on Zoom tomorrow probably again, uh, yeah. but appreciate it and have a great night. We're available anytime. Bye, Bye everybody.